Okay, it, uh, this video is, uh, is about uh, reinstalling the barrel after you removed it. All right, it'll be a real quick video. First, uh, you need the uh, the barrel alignment screw. All right, this is a little indent. The the, the end of this uh, screw will sit. So a little indent on the barrel, kind of sits on there, keeps it aligned. So you align your transfer port and assemble the rest of the pieces. All right. First, you need a two millimeter Allen. Get it ready. What you're going to do is uh, first you got to remove this uh, forward cap screw, All right? And screw it as your hole will align the barrel. Uh, you slide your barrel in. Usually I start from the, the back side so it doesn't scratch up the, the bluing by your cheek piece. Sometimes it does scratch it up a little bit but sometimes you can't avoid it but I slide in this way. When you slide it in have your orientation where is the indent on the barrel. Uh, to get uh, close, uh, you know where it's at. Like over here, you know where it's at. And uh, roughly what the location. Uh, you need to look inside this hole for that indent. This is the quickest way. You got some kind of bright light and look in there, then you'll see the indent. Like, hold on a minute. Uh, I'm going to find me a white spot here. It's this quicker way of doing it than fishing the other way around. Well, when you see the indent, you gotta hold the, the barrel in place while you screw in your uh, alignment screw. Alright, you screw all the way in and you verify. It doesn't move. You back off, back out on it a little bit, about half a turn. And you notice you can move it forward, you move it side to side, so you know you're on an indent. So what I do is lightly seat it only. Until there's no movement on the barrel. Alright, when this is aligned, you could uh, install your air tube. Alright, your air tube. You, you need this filled at least 160 bars before you you get to clamp it All right All right what you do is you got to slide in the breech the little barrel goes in and bottoms out on the shoulder here You breach, slide it in. There, you bottomed out. Now you get ready to push in your. Uh, make sure this uh, where is uh, breech screws that holds on to the firing valve, the flat side. Make sure it's aligned. You get aligned somewhat, and it goes in. It's best to do this. To me. When you have the, the hammer spring is removed, it's kind of easier to install. But you can do it either way. But if you want to keep your hammer spring in place, you got to have it cock. Then you might have a when it's cocked, you can accidentally touch the trigger and uh, and let it off. Then, if it's not fully cocked and you shoot it. The hammer is going to hit the cocking plate, the hook, and you might end up snapping that off. All right, and and also when you have the hammer valve in, I mean your valve spring, hammer spring. Sorry about the hammer spring. And somehow you're doing maintenance and testing out the the trigger or something, but. In the end of the situation, but 
you do not cock it with a spring tension in. Because even though you close it and you do a dry fire, you know, you'll end up breaking the cocking plate, cocking lever uh, hook. Even though it's partially open like this and you, and you pull trigger, you know, the firing valve will just snap that off. Then it would be difficult to replace this breech. You gotta replace that uh, one of the pins inside his breech that holds a cocking lever plate. Then there's a whole nother, another training here. Just, you end up drilling a hole through here and pressing out the, the broken uh, roll pin. All right? What we do is to be safe is to remove your uh, hammer spring. All right? The way uh, to get those, uh, the seat aligned for these screws is this bleed valve here. If there's a line above the, the trigger rod, you know it's kind of aligned. First one you adjust is the angle set screw. Well, on a 25, there's a flat head screw over here, but you do the, this one first, the angled one. What you do is uh, when you're lightly seated, rotate your air tube. And when you slightly move left to right, tighten down a little, little more till you find a dead center of the movement and align it, then tighten it down a little more. Then try to rotate and tighten it down. Rotate, tighten down slowly, rotate again, it's still moving, tighten down a little tighter. Now it no longer move, now you can tighten it. To, the way I tighten this without over torquing it is as a T handle. When it, it starts flexing about three quarter of a turn, you know that's it. Now you get a flat head screwdriver and tighten up the other screw. And again, you don't really need to over torque these slightly. All right, I'm gonna flip it over as you can see. Now, since the breech is already bolted down, all right, now you need to tighten down, right, tighten down your barrel clamps. You got to get out. What you do is make sure the cap screws are all on your shoulder. I mean, it's not loose like that. You gotta tighten down slow until it spins. No, no, the handle spins and it stops. So you're on the shoulder of the cap screw. You gotta do all this before it commence torquing it down. And there's a crisscross pattern when you torque this down. I would start out on this outside one. Only a quarter turn, or just watch how I do it. Quarter turn to less than a half between there and start out the outside one. You're crisscrossing this. All right, that much. Switch over the inside. There. On usually on your third one, you need to tighten it down until it gets on the shoulder. Then do then you do a quarter turn. Alright. Now they're all both on their all four of them on their shoulder. You commence torquing it, quarter turn only. Alright, we're gonna continue doing this till the cap screw heads no longer move. When they no longer move, this T-handle will, will flex. When we start flexing quarter turn, that's, that's all you need to go. I'll, you know, you don't need to go further than that. Okay. It's crisscrossing, two outside, two inside, Go outside again. You'll know, you actually feel it when uh, the cap screw move a little bit. You could feel it. Just continue doing that slowly. Because the metal has uh, is slow and reflect, uh, you know, when you compress it, it takes, you know, 
doesn't flex, I mean, compress right away. Can you continue doing this so the metal is settled? It doesn't you know, flex back. It's so tight. There, right now I'm crisscrossing. I feel the craft screws no longer move, and I'm flexing the T handle by a quarter turn. And that's it. All right, to verify the alignment according to the, your stock, sometimes they're not perfect, and sometimes your stock won't fit just right. Sometimes you need to loosen the screw, the, the barrel clamp again, so your stock will fit. But usually, well, in the middle of a uh, torquing procedure, I kind of check for the, I check, uh, I don't got an extra stock here, but I fit the stock, make sure it fits around the trigger housing here, all right? Because uh, this uh, stock screw has to align here and screw on. And if it doesn't, you have to re retorque it again and uh, re like, pre-align the stock you put the stock in there with the set the screw for the stock and lightly tighten it then you commence your torquing and that's it you just get to uh, reinstall your hammer spring and uh, you need to re this Notice a thumb adjuster is easier if you fight with the spring tension in between. So it, in between the, the threads, so it's easier to turn. It doesn't gall up your thread or wear out more. Then you just got to adjust your trigger. After you put on a horseshoe here. Right. Then you have to adjust your trigger after that. See now my trigger blade is too far back well, some people like it like that but usually I put in the middle most people like it like that all right after that is adjusting your trigger after it's all installed in torque all right then you crony it all right I hope this help out and uh, it's hard to talk while I'm doing all this and kind of fumble my way around all right we'll see you next uh, training video